Hello, can you calculate 45 squared, which is really 45 times 45, and do it in your head? Keep watching to find out how. Hi, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to learn a really quick, really useful uh, mathematical technique when you're trying to square any number that ends in 5. So we could be talking about 15, we could be talking about 25, we could be talking about 85, we could be talking about 105, any number that ends in 5, if you try to square it, there is an incredibly fast way to do that. You don't need any calculator at all. Before we get there, I want to remind you that any time we're squaring a number, it's, it's just taking that number, in this case 15 as an example, and multiplying it by itself. So for those of you who aren't sure what this, this little square means, that's what it means. So if we have, you know, 35 and we're squaring it, all we're doing is we're taking 35 and multiplying it by itself, 35. Um, the reason there's a number 2 here is because we're multiplying it by itself because it's written right here on the screen. So there's a very, very fast way to do this when the last digit that we have that we're squaring ends in 5. And that's what we're going to learn right now. So let's go ahead and take our first example that we have right here, 15 squared. Let's say you're on an SAT or you're on, an, on a standardized test and you really need to do things quickly and you don't want to take the time to do this in your calculator. All you need to do in order to square this guy is first you look at the first digit. In this case the first digit is the number one. So you focus on that and you take number one because that's what we have written here and you multiply one by one number higher. So we'll take number one, we'll multiply it by number two. Because we're just taking the number one, we're multiplying it by one more. One times two is two. So far not rocket science. 1 times 2 is 2. And to find the final answer, we just take the 2 that we found and we always have 25 at the end. And the answer is 225. So the, the bottom line is anytime you're squaring any number that ends in 5, the last two digits of that number will always be 25. It will always be 25. And that fact by itself can actually help you answer questions on, on an SAT or a GRE type of exam, just knowing that fact by itself. But taking it one step further, you just take the first digit, in this case number one, multiplying it by one larger, so one times two gives us two. We take the two and we stick 25 on the end. The answer is 225. So in other words, 15 times 15 is 225. Okay, here's our problem that we opened up this lesson with, 45 squared, which for those of you who aren't familiar with the square, uh, uh, the way we write that there, it just means 45 times 45. So the way to do that in the easiest, fastest way possible is we look at the first digit. In this case, it's a 4. So we mentally take number 4 and we multiply it by one larger, so 4 times 5. And 4 times 5, we all know, is 20. So mentally, we hold that 20 in our head. And to form the final answer, we just put the 20, and we know that any of these guys with a last number of 5, when we square them, it's always going to end in 25. So it's 2,025 is the answer. Here's our next problem, and you know this technique works for any number that ends in 5, even very large numbers like 85 squared. So if you were doing this, you would have 85 times 85, and you'd have to write it all out, do all of the digit multiplication, um, and then do all the addition, or, or maybe you can use another little shortcut technique. But this guy is much, much faster because all you really need to know, because this number ends in 5, is you take the leading digit, which is 8, and you're going to take 8 and multiply it by one larger, which is 9. 8 times 9 is 72. So mentally, you could easily look at 8 and multiply it by 9, get 72 in your head. And then to find the final answer, you just take 72 and stick 25 on the end because all of these guys are going to end in 25. So the answer to this guy, 85 squared, is 7,225. Now here's our next problem, and I want to make sure you absolutely understand that this trick or this technique works for any number that you're squaring that ends in 5. So here we've crossed a boundary where we're working with numbers larger than 100. And this technique involves a little more mental gymnastics, but it's the same exact thing that we've been doing before. So 
notice that we have three digits here. So instead of taking just the leading digit, which is what we've been doing before, really what you're doing in general is you're taking every digit other than the five, that anything in front of the five, and that's what you're working with. So in this case, we take 10, okay? And we're gonna multiply it by one larger. So what's one larger than 10? That would just be 11. So we're basically multiplying 10 times 11. And, and as we get larger and larger numbers, we just work with the numbers in front of the five. All right, so 10 times 11, you can use any technique you'd like to multiply 10 times 11. We've actually learned how to multiply by 11s earlier in this series, but anytime you're multiplying by 10, probably the easiest way to do it is just take the number here, uh, 11, and just stick a zero at the end, because when we're multiplying by 10, you just take the number and stick another zero at the end. So that's incredibly easy to do in your head. So we get 110 is our intermediate answer. So we take 110, and what do we do next? You guessed it, we just stick 25 on the end because our last digit is five. And this technique works for numbers that we're squaring that end in five. So 11,025. And I bet that most of you, if I asked you if you could uh, take 105 times 105 and do it in your head, and not only that, do it that quickly, most people wouldn't have any idea how to get started. But once you know the trick, it's pretty easy to do. Okay, here's our final problem, and I just want to do a couple of these guys larger than 100 so that you know that it's perfectly acceptable and easy to do. We're squaring a number that ends in 5, so we take the leading digits other than 5, everything in front of the 5, which in this case is 11, right? So we're going to take 11, and we're going to multiply it by one larger, so we're going to multiply it by 12. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more difficult, but really not that hard. What you need to do is multiply 11 times 12. Um, because that's what the, the general idea of what we've been doing so far. We take the digits in front, we multiply by one larger, and then we stick 25 on the end. So you can, you can do many different ways to, to multiply 11 times 12. You can, you can do it using any technique that I've taught you or any technique that you know how to do is perfectly acceptable. In this case, I'm just going to use the crisscross multiplication technique. So we learned that uh, in the previous lesson. So for the last digit, 1 times 2 gives me 2. Uh, and so for the middle digit, we do the crisscross. So we have 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1, so 2 plus 1 gives me 3, and the leading digit is 1 times 1, which is 1. So we have 132 here. And so to find the final answer, we do 132, and we just stick 25 on the end. So 13,225. And this technique can become very, very useful for you if you're crunched for time, or if you need to do something uh, you know, it's not going to show up every day that you're squaring something that ends in 5, but when it does show up, knowing how to do this, filing it away in your head, can help you shave those pre precious minutes or seconds off of your exam, help you get a better score, and uh, just in general, it's a good technique to file away and is useful in a great many situations. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you've learned something here. Practice it. Get a pencil and paper out. Uh, uh, write a few problems down, and I think you'll find with practice you can do this incredibly easily, and when the time comes that you'll need to use it, you'll be glad that you understand how to do it.